said the master of Jerusalem shall become heat. Meaning we was a high mountain, now we low. How you doing, my brother? How you doing? Come on up. All praise to the most high. Hey, can I ask what your name is, my brother? My name is Louis Favorite. Louis Favorite? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm Mikhail. Yeah, I'm a deacon here. Y'all couldn't find y'all somewhere else to do this? Oh, well, we come out here because we want to reach our people where they at. Because okay. just like y'all, we teach in the Bible, and we love our people, and we want our people to get salvation. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Teaching on a Sunday, you're not going to get salvation because Sunday is not the day of the Lord. Really? Every day is a Saturday. So we got to come out here where our people at and let y'all know. Right. Because guess what? It says, we, give me uh, Ezekiel 3.17. This is what we're doing. This is why we came here. Ezekiel 3.17. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Uh-huh. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. Cry aloud! The Bible tells us to cry aloud. The Bible tells us to cry aloud. Read. Spare not. Spare not. Don't spare nobody feelings. That's coming out of the Bible. We ain't out here doing harm to nobody. But yet, you got brothers who's supposed to be your brother calling the police on each other. Sis, what's the day of the Lord? Uh, what's the Sabbath day that you think? Every day? So you think every day is the Lord's Sabbath? Well, they have certain requirements. Watch this. Exodus 35 and uh, 3. Yeah. Watch this. Because guess what? I'm going to show you the uh, steps of repentance. Read that. Exodus chapter 35. Now you say every day. Watch this. Read 3. Come on. You shall kindle no fire. You shall do no what? Kindle no fire. You shall kindle no fire. Read. Throughout your habitation. Uh-huh. Upon the Sabbath day. So if every day was a Sabbath, that means that you wouldn't be able to cook never. So guess what? Every day is not the Sabbath. But he did chose one specific day. But guess what? It's not Sunday. It's not Sunday. But guess what? Let me ask you. Do you go to, do you go to Christian church? Do you go to church? You go sometimes? Okay. Jeremiah 3.15. Watch this. Jeremiah 3.15. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. Come on. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. Guess what? God says he's going to give you pastors. Who set up the pastors in the Christian church? Did God set them up? No. Because they have to go to theology school, seminar school, all of that. To get their degree to go, to be a minister, to be a pastor. Right. Guess what? God didn't set that up. Read. What shall feed you with knowledge and understanding? Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Exactly. So guess what? Is they feeding our people with knowledge and understanding? No, they're not. So should we be going to church? Hell no. Because why? God says he's going to give you pastors. The men that God set up is the men you see right here in Purple and Gold. We teach the commandments. We teach the knowledge of God. We teach the laws of God. We teach how to keep our brothers from being thugs, you know what I'm saying, drug dealers, you know what I'm saying, gangbangers. We teach our brothers how to stop that, how to stop our sisters from being prostitutes. It's time to we, uh, that we wake up. Exactly. So now, what you going to do? You understand that, but what you going to do? If you, you have that understanding, what are you going to do? Bring it out. How you going to do that? How you, how you gonna bring the community back? Peace and love. Yes, and love? Okay, give me what love is. Because guess what? I'm gonna show you what love is according to the Bible. What love, do, what love means to you? Treat everybody right. Treat everybody right. All right, so that's uh, what? I uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? All right, watch this. Read. First John chapter 5, verse 3. Because guess what? If I commit adultery with your wife, is that love? Yeah, no. That, that's not love, right? If I commit adultery with your wife, that's not love. According to the Bible, that's not love. So, guess what? Is love is just uh, treat people right? No, it's not. We're going to show you. Read. Come on. But this is the love of God. This is the love of God. Read. That we keep 
His commandments. Guess what? It always reverts back to the commandments. Love is the keeping of the commandments. So, exactly. So, one commandment is to stop smoking. Yeah, so throw that cigarette. Uh, put it out. Oh, you already did. All praise, my brother. That's that's first step. So repentance, right? Give me Ezekiel. Give me Ezekiel. Matter of fact, you in the New Testament already? Give me Acts three nineteen. Watch this. This is the first steps into repenting and turning back from what we was taught because we've been we have to acknowledge we was taught wrong in order to better our community. Watch it. We have we have to acknowledge our faults right. in order to clean up the neighborhood. We have to say, you know what? I need to stop smoking. You know what? I need to stop drug dealing. You know what? I need to stop gang banging. You know what? I need to stop whoring out our daughters to be prostitutes. Read. Come on. Acts three nineteen. Acts chapter three verse nineteen. Read. Repent, ye therefore. The Bible commands the children of Israel, you so-called blacks, to do what? Repent ye therefore. Repent. Read. And be converted. And be converted to what the Bible says. What converts us? What do the Bible say converts us? We gonna get that. Psalms 19 and 7. Watch this. Because guess what? We about to learn something that you never was taught in your life. We never was taught. We grew up in a Christian church. Guess what? Was we were taught the laws of God? No. Read. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Come on. The law. Of the Lord is perfect. The Bible says the Lord is a purpose. Per perfect. So for the Christians to say the Lord of God is done away with, that's a shame. That's a shame unto God. Why? Because read that again. The law of the Lord is perfect. Because the Bible says the laws of God is perfect. So guess what? For them that say the law or uh, the laws is done away with, guess what? That's a smack in the face to the Lord. Right. right. Come on. Converting the soul. Do a what? Converting. The soul. Because why? Because the laws of God turns boys into men. It right. turns daughters into women. It don't condone the drug violence, the emotional men. Right. It doesn't do that. This is what the Bible commands us as the children of Israel. Give me 1 Kings chapter 2 and 2. Because they have a lot of emotional men that come out of the Christian church. Right. And we are here to cast down the imagination. We are here to bring our people the truth, the knowledge of God in this land. Watch this, read. Come on. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. I go the way of all the earth. Read. Be thou strong, therefore. The Bible says, be thou strong, therefore, you blacks. You Hispanics, read. And show thyself a man. And do what? Show thyself a man. Show thyself a man. Now, how do you do that? Read. And keep the charge of the Lord. Keep the charge of the Lord. Read. Thy God. To walk in his way. Come on. To keep his statutes and his commandments. To keep his statutes and his commandments. This is how you show yourself a man according to God. So guess what? Is the men in, sitting in the Christian church, is they showing themselves men according to God? No. No, because guess what? They'll tell you the laws of God is done away with, but pass around that collection plate. But the law of tithing was the law for the priests. That law was done away with. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? They still keep that law. So they contradict themselves. They contradict themselves. Ezekiel 18. Come on, Ezekiel 18. And from, give me Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 26. Watch this. Watch this, my brother. Ezekiel 22 and 20, uh, 26. Read. Ezekiel chapter 22 Watch verse this, 26. Up. Come on. Have peace. Have violated my law. He said, my priests have violated my law. The priests have violated my law. Your pastors is violating God's laws. Read. And have profaned my holy thing. And have profaned God's holy thing. Uh -huh. Read that part again. Watch this, my brother. The priests have violated my law. Uh -huh. And have profaned my holy thing. The priests, your so-called pastors, have profaned God's holy things. Why? Because they tell you you can, you can celebrate Easter. Easter Sunday. They tell you you can celebrate Christmas. They tell you you can celebrate all of these holidays that's not of God. But ask your pastor. Do we celebrate Passover? Do we celebrate Feast of Dedication? Well, Christ actually celebrated. So is they true followers of Christ? 
to even call themselves Christians? Hell no. Read. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. They'll tell you, oh, the, uh, you can celebrate Christmas, but then tell you, nah, you ain't got to keep Passover no more. You ain't got to keep Easter. But tell you, you, you ain't got to keep Feast of Dedication, but tell you also that you can celebrate Thanksgiving. Read. Come on. Neither have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. Because guess what? They tell you you, can't, you can eat pork. You can eat whatever you want. But every creature of God is good. Read. Read that part again. They have, they have shown no difference between the unclean and the clean. Guess what? They don't put a difference between the foods that you can eat and can't eat. They tell you you can eat anything you want. Guess what? That's the reason why people is dying at a high rapid rate of sicknesses and disease. Okay. Now, the foods that you make a reference to, because first, God has created, yeah, he created the foods that you can eat and the foods that you can't eat. There's dietary laws. In fact, hold that. Give me Leviticus 11. Because guess what? He had put a difference. Start at verse 44 first. He had put a difference in the foods that we can eat and can't eat. But guess what? We've been taught that we can eat anything. I'm going to answer your first question first, then we're going to get to your second question. Watch this. Read. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 44. Come on. For I am the Lord your God. Come on. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Read. Why? And ye shall. the Lord our God. Read. Come on. And ye shall be holy. And ye shall be holy. Read. For I am holy. Holy means to be separate, set apart. God, we're we going to get that in a second. But watch this. Read. Come on. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping things. With any manner of creeping things. Read. That creepeth upon the earth. Come on. Watch this. For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt. Because he's the Lord our God and only our God. Read. To be your God. Come on. And ye shall therefore be holy. For I am holy. Come on. Watch this. Read. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature. That moving in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, uh -huh. to make a difference. To make a what? A difference. To make a difference. So the Lord put a difference in all of the fowls, the beasts, the fish. He put a difference in what you can eat and can't eat. The Lord put that difference. Now watch this. Leviticus 11 and 7. Watch this. Because guess what? You eat pork. You, ain't, you don't eat pork. That's good. Watch this. Come on. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof. The swine, what is that? It's pork. All right. Watch this. And be clever for him. Uh-huh. Come on. Yet he cheweth not the cud. He don't chew the cud. He has uh, one stomach and the, he swallow it, throw it back up and eat it again. He don't chew the cud. All right. Watch. Read. Come on. He is unclean to he you. Is what? Unclean to you. Pork is unclean. So the pork that they sell, hell yeah, it is bad for us. It's bad for us. We should not be eating that. You know what I'm saying? Now, however, give me that in Ecclesiasticus. Um, moderate meat. Eat it. Ecclesiasticus. Because guess what? Yes, beef is lawful. Chicken is lawful. Turkey is lawful. You know what I'm saying? God, God. No, chicken is not pork. Now, you got to be careful because some meats, it says contains chicken and pork. You shouldn't eat that. Verse 19. Come on. A very little is sufficient for a man. So, okay, so, so it says what? Read that part again. A very little is sufficient for a man. It's very nurturing. little. So guess what? Too much of anything is bad for you, especially meats. So if you eat beef every day, guess what? It could clog your artery. It, it's very bad for you. Exactly. So guess what? Too much of anything is bad. Now, however, remember when we read in Leviticus 11 and 44, right? The Lord made a difference between the food that we can't eat and that we can eat. He made a difference. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? The food that's being sold in these food places and things like that is not all good. It's not all good. But 
You have to know. You have to have the knowledge of God to know, okay, that's unlawful. That's unlawful. But guess what? If you continue to go to the Christian church, you're going to think anything is good. You're going to be going there. You can pick a raccoon. You can pick up any damn thing and eat it because you think everything good. That's the, and that's the problem. So you know what I'm saying? Sirach 3729, that's what you that's want. That's the problem. So rock 3729. Watch this. Because guess what? Like we was discussing about the meats. Now, let me ask you this. What was your other question? That you had. If they give if they give you medicine, yes, you're supposed to take the medicine because the Bible says you're supposed to honor thy physician. All right, the Bible says honor thy physician, right? You take your medicine, right? Okay, the, if the doctor prescribed that for you, then guess what? You should take it. You know what I'm saying? If the doctor prescribed that to you, you should, you should take it. All right, jump to verse 15. Now, however, watch this. Read verse 15. He that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. Now the Bible says what? He that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. Now the Bible says he that sins before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. So the complications and things like that that you might be going through or whatever, guess what? It's because of sin. You know what I'm saying? With unclean and clean foods that you may eat, that's why the Bible commands us. He put a, a clear distinction between the food that you can eat and the food that you can't eat. Why? Because the Bible says, he that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. That's why you got to go to the doctor in the first place to get medicine. Because you're sinning. You know what I'm saying? Now, hold that. Give me Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Because guess what? Sin, it brings death. You know what I'm saying? It brings death to us. Sin, that's exactly what happens. That's why you see our people die at a higher rapid rate. It's because of sin. Watch this. Read. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Come on. But the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. You know what I'm saying? The wages of sin is death. So guess what? If you eat all type of unclean foods, guess what's going to happen? Death. That's what it's going to be. That's the result. That's the end result of that. When you in sin, death happens. Now give me uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Watch this. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Because it's something that we have to come into the knowledge of and start opening the Bible and reading it with our spiritual eyes, our content, and our true history. You know what I'm saying? Read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I come to destroy the law. And guess what? The foods that's in the Old Testament, the law and unclean that we read in Leviticus chapter 11, he said what? Think not that I come to destroy the law. Christ didn't come to do away with that. But that's something that the Christian church teach. They, they teach to do away with that. Read. All the prophets. All the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What did Christ come to fulfill? He came, I'm going to show you. Give me that Acts 3 and 8. I mean, 18. Acts 3 and 18. This is what Christ actually came to fulfill. It wasn't the dietary law. So, guess what? You eat um, seafood, like crab, lobster, crawfish, all of those type of things. Okay, that's good. Your doctor probably told you don't eat it, right? Why? Because guess what? That's bad for you. That's bad for you. Because God told, God told us in the first place not to eat it. Watch this. Read. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. But those things which God before has shown by the mouth of all his prophets. Come on. That Christ should suffer. That Christ should what? Suffer. Uh-huh. He has so fulfilled. Guess what? Christ dying on the cross for the atonement for the nation of Israel's sins, to be that ultimate sacrifice, that's what he came to fulfill. Really? He came to fulfill that law. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't the dietary laws or nothing like that.
like power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.